All right, so last time we talked about uh, supersymmetry in general, and uh, we looked at uh, the the we looked at the classification of particles as bosons and fermions, and what do we mean by that? We also uh, try to understand what is supersymmetry and why is the supersymmetry needed and uh, uh, the Coleman and Mendiola theorem uh, was an aid to understanding the the significance or the importance or why do we need to study a supersymmetry. And uh, uh, in this lecture, uh, let's review uh, the bosonic harmonic oscillator and we'll talk about the fermionic harmonic oscillator before we... Uh, well, dig into what is called as the supersymmetric harmonic oscillator. And it would turn out uh, that the supersymmetric harmonic oscillator is, in fact, the combination of a bosonic harmonic oscillator and the fermionic harmonic oscillator. And that's the reason that I'll be first reviewing these two oscillators very quickly in this lecture number two. So, so let's start first with the bosonic harmonic oscillator and uh, we'll start uh, uh, by, uh, by writing down uh, the Hamiltonian but before I even do that I'll tell you that I'll be working in uh, what are called the natural units uh, where uh, for our E's uh, I'm going to set K equals m equals uh, well there are so many other constants for example h bar and all the other constants even if uh, well we don't have c in here so let's just ignore it uh, i'll be setting these to unity uh, so that we can avoid all the uh, uh, gymnastics of these constants right okay so uh, we'll start with the hamiltonian the hamiltonian for a bosonic uh, oscillator is uh, well for any harmonic oscillator you can write down the uh, Hamiltonian uh, as P squared over 2m uh, well uh, let's ignore this m uh, P squared over 2 plus uh, x squared over 2 right uh, the reason I said ignoring m was that I'm setting it equal to 1 okay now uh, well, there is a very uh, neat and I must say a beautiful approach to writing down the quantum version of this harmonic oscillator uh, by defining uh, two operators which are uh, known as a creation and uh, uh, creation and destroyer or uh, I think you call it annihilation. operators right uh, well these operators uh, are also referred to as uh, the creation one is known as the raising operator and annihilation is known as the lowering operator and in a bit you'll see why is that so right uh, what they are creating or annihilating or what they are raising or lowering uh, are the states of the oscillator right Okay, so uh, we define these by uh, uh, we'll, I'll, for, for the bosonic uh, system, I'll define them with A. So A itself is the lowering operator. So let me, let me give it a heading first. So for the lowering one, we have A, which is, uh, which is defined as 1 over under root 2 of P minus iota x, right? And the raising operator is simply the uh, the dagger of this lowering operator, and it is then one over square root two p, and this will become plus iota x, right? So 
It turns out that by defining these operators and solving the system, uh, you already know from your course on quantum mechanics, uh, ordinary quantum mechanics, or quantum mechanics one, I should say, uh, you know that we, uh, we can uh, solve the harmonic oscillator using this operator approach. You also have another one, it's called the wave mechanics approach, but uh, this operator approach is indeed a, a more elegant uh, way of looking at the harmonic oscillator, right? Quantum harmonic oscillator. Right, now, uh, well, there is a relation that you already know uh, from your course on, again, quantum mechanics one, it is the commutator of the position and the momentum operator. And this commutator is defined as iota, again, in natural units. Uh, so uh, what is a commutator? Uh, it is just, uh, mathematically speaking, it is just, uh, it is there to uh, ensure the order of operation, right? So you can write it as x hat p hat minus I, uh, sorry, uh, minus p hat x hat, right? And this thing, it turns out for, uh, if you uh, write down the operator form of the momentum operator, which is minus iota uh, um, partial over partial x for a one-dimensional case or, uh, or the nabla or the del operator for a three-dimensional case. Uh, right, and so if you write your momentum operator in this way and you act it on a, some state psi or any state, quantum mechanical state, uh, and uh, in this form of this commutator, uh, you already know that the uh, operator for the uh, position is simply the position function itself. And so this thing, if you take it and you act it on a state, uh, you what you get is, uh, uh, the value of this commutator is iota, right? Okay, now uh, in the similar manner, what you can do is compute the commutator of A with A. This is the lowering operator and this commutator vanishes, right? And uh, so what that essentially means is that you can change the order of operation in you know, when you're working with A itself. So it also makes a sense if you think about it. And in the same way you have the commutator of A dagger with A dagger itself and it also vanishes. But what, what happens when you take uh, the commutator of A with A dagger? Well, it turns out that this commutator, you can solve it yourself it is equal to one. And the reason I'm not going to do all these calculations in this video is simply because this is not a course on quantum mechanics one. Uh, it is just, uh, it's just a review of the harmonic oscillator, right? And well, uh, I, I, there are some things that I'm going to uh, go into depth with. Uh, for example, uh, when I'll tell you why is this uh, operator uh, lowering or the raising operator is given its uh, respective name, right? So we look at that. Uh, right, so now uh, with the help of these commutators and the definition of these operators as follows, what you can do is you can simultaneously solve these two equations for these operators and find the value of uh, p hat and x hat in terms of these operators and you can plug it in here for the Hamiltonian and what you see then is that this Hamiltonian uh, becomes H is equal to A dagger A plus one half times, well, uh, we're uh, dealing in natural units and so let's also define the frequency as a one. So this is what your Hamiltonian becomes, right? This is the form that it takes. And now this, uh, because we are uh, so far, we are working in the bosons uh, or the bosonic states, uh, you have to understand that there is no restriction on how many number of times you can uh, act with a dagger on your state, right? That's the uh, definition of a boson, right? So you can have as many bosons 
in a single quantum state. So uh, we'll look uh, into that uh, in just a moment. But uh, if we, if you remember, this thing is also known as a number operator and it is uh, defined uh, with n in literature. And so because we're working uh, right now in the uh, bosonic state, so let's call this Hamiltonian B, H, B, and the number operator then associated with it is N, B. So what this is telling you, it is telling you the, the, the number of bosons in, uh, in your system, right? So if now uh, with this Hamiltonian, with this Hamiltonian, you can also uh, compute the commutator of the Hamiltonian with these operators. So with the uh, lowering operator, uh, this commutator gives you negative A. So it gives you the operator itself with a negative sign. And for the, uh, for the, for the raising operator, this commutator gives you uh, the raising operator itself, right? So these are just some of the important relations uh, for these commutators. Now uh, let's look at the ground state of uh, the bosonic harmonic oscillator. So uh, the ground state, uh, uh, let me write it. So the ground state for a bosonic harmonic oscillator is defined by the, uh, by the action of the lowering operator on the ground state of, uh, of, your, um, of your oscillator and uh, that is defined as uh, zero. So this thing, if you take uh, the lowering operator and you act it on the minimum state of the harmonic oscillator, uh, you, uh, you you get nothing, so it vanishes, right? And that's how the ground state is defined. Now, if I were to uh, if I were to uh, write down the energy for this ground state, all I have to do is take my Hamiltonian and act it on uh, the uh, ground state zero. And what you get with this is well, uh, let's quickly do this uh, simple uh, calculation. It's extremely simple. So uh, we already saw over here that you can write down the Hamiltonian, the bosonic Hamiltonian in this form. So uh, I'll just take this Hamiltonian, a dagger a plus one half, and I'll act it on my state zero. And what you see is that this gives you a dagger a zero plus one half and your state zero. So, uh, well, we already have established that uh, if this A will act on zero, it will simply destroy uh, uh, the state, right? So uh, what you get from this thing is, it doesn't matter then uh, what A dagger acts on, it's, it's just going to act on some, uh, some uh, on nothing to be honest, uh, on zero. So this will just give you zero and then you have plus one by two, zero. Right, uh, cool. So uh, now if you recall quickly that your uh, Schrodinger equation is given as H psi is equal to E psi. So what I can do is I can take this equation and I can say that my H on zero is simply E of the zeroth state on zero. Uh, this was the bosonic uh, Hamiltonian. And then this is what I got from this left hand side. So I can write 1 by 2, 0 uh, is equal to E0. And therefore the ground state energy for the, uh, for the uh, harmonic or the bosonic uh, harmonic oscillator is simply 1 half. Again, this is in terms of the uh, natural units where uh, omega, h cut, and all of those other things are uh, set to one. Right, so this is the ground state energy of the bosonic harmonic oscillator. Now let's quickly look at uh, the, let's quickly look at the Fox space of, uh, of, the, of the bosonic harmonic oscillator. So a Fox space is, uh, it is actually 
uh, a space of, uh, of uh, some unknown identical uh, particles that is uh, that you uh, that you can make or create out of uh, out of from a single particle that resides in that Hilbert space. So uh, what that means is that if I uh, if I have uh, uh, how I can create a Fox space is very simple. I take uh, I have initially I have the state zero, right? And what I can do is I can uh, I can take my operator a dagger and I can apply it on zero, and then I can take it uh, I can uh, take the square of this operator or uh, or in other words just apply it two times uh, on my state zero, so I can get another uh, quantum state uh, for this bosonic harmonic oscillator. So I hope you're getting the uh, idea of uh, what this Fox space really is, right? And and so then what I can do here is I can go on and I can define the n particle state. So the n particle state is, uh, is defined or uh, uh, I can also write it as n. This state is uh, defined as, uh, well you can uh, understand from here itself that it is defined as uh, operating a dagger n times on your state zero and uh, you have this uh, uh, this uh, coefficient or the you can call it a constant which is uh, under root n right and this is how your n particle state is defined uh, um, for a bosonic harmonic oscillator again uh, you can uh, the the fox space uh, is for this fox space is for bosons right and uh, the uh, the you can make a Fox space in this way uh, simply because uh, uh, because of the definition of bosons itself that uh, the, there is no limit on uh, the number of bosons that can uh, reside or live inside a single quantum state. So uh, with this at hand, now uh, we can also, uh, like I promised, I'm, I'll show you uh, very quickly why uh, the uh, why these operators are given their respective names and so you can uh, uh, what i'll do is i'll i'll quickly show uh, why a uh, let me uh, pose it as a, as a question uh, why a is lowering right so why is it called a lowering operator so to answer this question, what I'll be needing is uh, is the commutator of uh, A with the number operator, which was, if you remember, A dagger A, right? So this is the number operator for bosons. And uh, uh, you can write this as, you can write this as, uh, using the uh, obviously the definition of the commutator, you can write this as a a dagger a and uh, minus a dagger a a. Right. So now uh, let's uh, let's uh, do some simplification, and uh, this thing can also be uh, written as a a dagger. A minus A dagger A and A, right? And uh, the reason for that is uh, the the commutator of A dagger and A was equal to one, if you remember, and the commutator of A with itself or A dagger with itself vanishes. So. Uh, using this now, if you can uh, see over here, this thing is simply A on the right hand side and the rest is simply the commutator of A and A dagger, right? And uh, this thing, because we know that the commutator of A and A dagger is unity, uh, this thing is simply equal to A because the reason being that this thing is equal to one. And uh, we define this commutator uh, over here 
and it is well i would say it is your uh, task to prove that this relation is indeed true uh, just as uh, as an exercise to quickly review your uh, i don't know mathematical skills or whatnot uh, for because again this is just a review of the harmonic oscillator uh, you, if you have studied uh, quantum mechanics one uh, at your undergrad uh, level, uh, you have uh, probably looked at uh, looked at the uh, the harmonic oscillator and the harmonic oscillator that you were looking at in your uh, course on quantum mechanics one was uh, the bosonic harmonic oscillator. Uh, you'll quickly uh, realize well, why am I saying this right now uh, when I'll start uh, with the fermionic harmonic oscillator and uh, the the only difference uh, in that uh, would come from the uh, very nature of fermions uh, or the definition of fermions itself right so uh, again coming back to this uh, what I can do here is I'll uh, I'll just uh, for the sake of simplicity uh, let's uh, let's call uh, let's uh, call this state uh, a n so uh, a acting on n let's call this another state uh, let's call it b or uh, let's not call it b let's just call it uh, the reason I'm not calling it b is uh, well you can call it b because it, this is just uh, this is just a state right so it's just a state b it's not an operator or anything uh, and, and you'll again see uh, why uh, why I just said this uh, when I'll start the uh, fermionic harmonic oscillator. Anyways, uh, let's do this very quickly. Uh, so now, uh, if I take this number operator, uh, let's uh, let's just call it n now. So uh, again, remember n is defined as the product of these two operators, and it's known as the number operator. So if I take this number operator and I uh, apply or act it on state b uh, this state uh, what happens is uh, i can write this as n on a uh, small n and uh, this thing is simply equal to uh, the commutator of n and a uh, plus uh, a n on state n now uh, if I uh, if I evaluate this expression over here, what I get is minus a plus a n on state n, and uh, well, uh, you can factor your uh, what happened? Oh yeah, uh, you can factor your uh, your uh, your state a uh, now and take it to the right hand side. So uh, this thing simply becomes n minus 1 a on n and uh, again remember uh, we defined uh, this thing over here so I can call this thing as n minus 1 state b so what you understand from here is that this new state b is an eigenstate of n having the eigenvalue n minus 1. So this is the eigenvalue. Uh, so what I can do now is I can, uh, I can, I can write it in terms of a as a uh, on n is simply equal to uh, uh, some, uh, some coefficient cn uh, n minus 1. Right? Uh, okay. So uh, this uh, Cn, uh, uh, Cn coefficient, you can uh, simply uh, solve for it uh, using uh, very simple methods. Uh, and that is, uh, you can write down this matrix element of uh, the number operator n as uh, follows. And this thing is simply equal to n a dagger a on n. And uh, this thing is equal to uh, the, uh, this, uh, the, uh, this coefficient, right? So this coefficient uh, mod square. Now, uh, this uh, Cn uh, mod square conventionally 
uh, if you uh, evaluate this expression, the, then the Cn mod square uh, conventionally is uh, is n. And so if I were to find Cn itself, it is square root n. And uh, now if I take this and if I put it back in this expression, what I see is that if I have a on n, what, ha what happens is this gives me square root n into n minus and the state n minus one. So what happened over here is that if I took my state uh, n and I act it on with this uh, operator a. So, so far uh, we are just doing the mathematics and there was no physical uh, well meaning to it. But now we can uh, see what physically this means is that a simply uh, took your state n and lowered it by one quanta, right? Uh, that's what this expression over here is telling you. And now uh, you can do the same thing uh, uh, with uh, the raising operator a dagger and I leave that again as an exercise uh, to you. Okay, anyways, uh, now uh, coming back to uh, our our problem, we uh, we discussed uh, enough about the uh, the or at least what we would need for the bosonic harmonic oscillator. Uh, now what you can do is uh, you can uh, or now what we'll do is we'll look at uh, the. Uh, let me just quickly first write these uh, operators over here. That if I have a on n, we just saw this gives you n uh, and n minus 1. If I do the same thing uh, with a dagger on n, this gives me square root of n plus 1 as the constant or the coefficient and uh, n plus 1. So this is the reason that these operators are given their raising and lowering names, right? Okay, cool. So now let's uh, let's start uh, fermionic uh, harmonic oscillator, and uh, and uh, well, a lot of things will be sim uh, simply kind of uh, the same, uh, at least in uh, in the sense of the method. Uh, only the difference arises from, like I said before. The basic, uh, the basic definition or the defining uh, principle of fermions itself. And we know that these fermions are basically defined by the Pauli's exclusion principle. And we discussed this in the last lecture as well. Uh, this principle simply states that no two uh, fermionic uh, particles can occupy or live inside a same quantum state. So what this then tells you is that you can only have two states, uh, let's call one zero and the other one let's call it one. So uh, you, cannot have, uh, you cannot have a state two, right? So this is not allowed uh, for fermions. And now what I'm going to do is we'll again uh, define the raising and lowering operators uh, for the fermionic case. Uh, we, for the bosonic, it was done using A. Uh, for fermionic, we'll do with B. So B dagger and B are those, are the set of operators that we'll be needing. So, uh, well, um, the, uh, so uh, saying that this thing is not going to happen, uh, what I can do is I can, uh, for example, let's say I have a state two. How can I get that? I can get that by acting with B dagger on zero two times. But because the principle of fermions do not allow this, this should be equal to zero. So the only way that this thing can, can be equal to zero is if this operator b dagger squared was equal to zero. Wow, now that's a strange thing to happen, right? So you have a number 
and the square of that number is zero it vanishes how is that possible right so uh, well in mathematics you have this thing it's called uh, it's known as the uh, the Grassmann Uh, I think there is a double N at the end, uh, Grassmann numbers, right? So, uh, well, I'm not going to go into the mathematical details or the gory details of Grassmann numbers. We'll just uh, consider what is important for us uh, uh, right now. And that is that uh, these, are, uh, these are the numbers which are uh, actually defined uh, by, uh, well, um, you can uh, you can define these numbers with with a relation that's uh, let's say you have two numbers um, you can call it anything let's just call it uh, let's just call it uh, psi 1 and uh, psi 2 so I the reason I'm using psi is because I'm going to associate this with the uh, quantum states of the fermions and so let's say that there are two numbers psi 1 and psi 2 uh, these numbers are uh, or uh, the the uh, you can say the algebra uh, uh, is uh, is defined using the generators uh, that are anti-commuting and so uh, therefore this uh, the Grassmann algebra is defined by the anti-commutator and uh, and so uh, what is an anti-commutator? The anti-commutator of these two uh, is written like this and it is simply uh, the product of these in this way uh, and you add when you exchange these so you get psi 2 psi 1. So this is how an anti-commutator is defined and uh, uh, you, uh, you can think of these uh, psi 1 and psi 2 uh, as the basis vectors of a vector space uh, or an n-dimensional vector space and these uh, psi 1 and psi 2 or, uh, or well many uh, Grassmann variables they form an algebra over a field uh, where the field is of uh, uh, field is of a complex numbers right so the field is defined uh, you know, with the complex numbers and uh, the algebra is uh, known as a uh, it's a it's 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 called a Yuntel algebra and well let's not uh, let's not go into the details of that uh, well uh, because I can uh, now uh, using this anti-commutator what I can do is I can write this as psi 1 psi 2 being equal to negative of psi 2 psi 1 and this property itself uh, uh, this property itself uh, tells you that the square of these uh, variables psi 1 and psi 2 so uh, I can I can write psi 1 squared as being equal to 0 right and again, this is because I can write any, let's take psi i, uh, psi i, psi i being equal to negative psi i, psi i. And so what this tells you is uh, that the Grassmann a number or a variable is a non-zero square root of zero itself, right? So, uh, well, uh, and this much detail I think is uh, is enough for uh, for Grassmann numbers what we need to understand from this point onwards is that your fermions uh, fermions can be or they actually are uh, are represented using uh, represented using or by the uh, Grassmann variables right so this point is an important point so now uh, what I can do is uh, well you can see that your operator uh, B dagger uh, has this restriction 
on it, right? So the square of your B dagger is equal to zero. Now, what I want you to do is, uh, is quickly, uh, and it's a very simple proof, you can uh, prove that the fermionic harmonic uh, oscillator is a Hamiltonian is given as B dagger B minus one by two. And uh, uh, yeah, that's it. So this is how your uh, the Hamiltonian of a fermionic oscillator is defined, right? So this is for the fermionic harmonic oscillator. And notice this uh, negative sign uh, for the bosonic harmonic oscillator, what you had here was a, a positive sign. And so again, likewise, in the same manner, the, this operator is called as the number operator, but this time let's give it a subscript F for the number of fermions that you can have. And again, in the same way, we can look at, uh, we can look at now the ground state of fermions. And the ground state of a fermions is again defined as B acting on zero, uh, giving me nothing. So it's, it's, it's vanish, it vanishes. Uh, in the same analogy to the a harmonic oscillator. Uh, but the, uh, the interesting point over here is when I, uh, when I apply this fermionic uh, Hamiltonian on my ground state, what, do, what happens? You can, uh, well, you can quickly check what happens is if you take B uh, dagger B minus one half and act it on zero, this gives you B dagger B on zero minus one half on zero and again uh, well this thing on this will just vanish so this term becomes zero and this becomes minus one half zero and therefore the ground state energy for the uh, for the fermionic harmonic oscillator is minus one by two and notice that th this uh, ground state for the fermionic oscillator has a negative energy right uh, and uh, you can, again, you can construct the Fox space for the fermionic, uh, for the fermionic uh, oscillator. And uh, the Fox space is, uh, is, is, is constructed by using the state uh, zero and the operator B dagger. So let's say I apply B dagger on zero it gives me state one, and then I can apply B dagger uh, squared on zero, and it gives me, uh, it gives me another uh, state. But now, uh, notice that this thing is not allowed for the fermionic oscillator, as B dagger squared is itself defined as, uh, it is defined as, uh, as zero, right? Uh, again, uh, using those uh, the the using the Grassmann numbers, right? Uh, as I have already uh, established that the fermions are represented uh, via Grassmann numbers. So, uh, so the only uh, thing that you can have the Fox space for fermions is just zero and B dagger on zero, right? Which is uh, which is equal to one, right? Okay, so uh, so what you can do now is you can also uh, you can also take the you can take the Hamiltonian and apply it on this state one just to see what is the uh, what is the energy of this state one, right? So if I were to do that. Uh, what I can do is I can first write this state one in terms of state zero uh, as B dagger acting on state zero. And when B dagger acts on state zero and you take your uh, HF and you apply it, uh, this, uh, this thing sh should give you, or it gives you one by two, uh, one. Right? And you can uh, quickly uh, check this as an exercise for yourself uh, simply by writing the, uh, the fermionic uh, harmonic, uh, uh, harmonic oscillators Hamiltonian as B dagger B minus one by two. And then uh, first you apply this on this and then you can 
apply this operator on whatever you get from B dagger, which would be state one. And if you do that, you'll see that uh, uh, what you get is uh, one by two uh, state one, right? So you can do this as an exercise. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, let's just stop right here. And in the next uh, lecture, lecture number three, what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll start with the supersymmetric harmonic oscillator, right? And uh, we'll, uh, in, that, uh, in that what we'll be doing is we'll be combining these two oscillators, uh, namely the bosonic and the fermionic harmonic oscillator. And the a combination of these two is what you will call a supersymmetric harmonic oscillator but uh, we'll have some conditions and uh, and uh, and well one of those uh, or the very important condition will be that there is no interaction between the two oscillators uh, and what that would imply is then uh, the the fermionic and the bosonic operators a and b uh, and their daggers they'll all commute with each other right and so we'll see, we'll construct the Fox space, we'll uh, talk about what is called as a supercharge that you have probably, uh, you probably kind of remember I mentioned it in the last uh, or the first lecture. And uh, we'll define a supercharge using these operators A and B. And uh, we'll see what happens when you take a supercharge and act it on different or various uh, multiple states. We'll look at the commutators and, uh, and so on, right? So uh, let's just stop right here and leave, uh, the, leave the rest for uh, the le next lecture.